Hello everyone, I'm Zalner Nelson Jr., the developer of All Halo Spider God, Screw Bear Dad, and the upcoming short story, Tell Virgo. And today I'm very happy to again be joined by my wonderful uh, co-workers and collaborators over at Ramjet Anvil, the developers of Volo Air Sport, Martin. Yeah, that's me. Hi. And Frank. Hi. I just realized I bungled my own name in the introduction. Okay, we're going to keep that in. Yes. <laughs> So, it's good. the first thing you'll immediately notice if you're looking at the screen is that the parachute no longer looks like a bunch of blocks arbitrarily floating over our magnificent capsule person's head. It is an actual mesh, and it exists in the world, and it can get tangled, and it can flop over on your prone, dead body. Frank, yeah. how did this amazing thing come to be? Uh, I'm not talking about the death, but like the actual parachute. <laughs> um, well, uh, actually, Martijn worked really, really hard on uh, making a procedural uh, meshes for the for the parachute. So if it gets and edited, it stays at. like consistent. It will always look like a parachute, a good parachute. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. It doesn't really matter what shape or form you you will uh, uh, bend it in. Uh, yeah. you, you're looking at the, the new uh, parachute editor as well, so you can... Uh, Whoa! Ooh. Look at that! <laughs> you can see how the new <laughs> parachute mesh uh, always takes the shape that you, you selected in. Um, Change yeah. to that! Look at that! And believe it or not, this is wow. actually logical. <laughs> if you make something that is this insane, that's probably how impractical it would be in real life. Or at least close to it. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is... I, I don't think anyone wants to fly this in real life. No, I'm gonna go back to my uh, comfy blanket. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're looking at the new editor now. You can see there's a color picker and uh, there's some new tools. Um, the way you, you select uh, the height between the pilot and the canopy uh, is ch is, uh, has changed. Uh, the way you can change the shape. You can edit it naturally easy. now. Yeah. Huh. This uh, looks like it took a lot of work. Yeah, it took it took a while to uh, to figure out what what really worked well and what didn't work. Um, like first, I had a bunch of arrows everywhere, and that wasn't really intuitive. So then I thought maybe we should just um, make the canopy itself uh, uh, changeable. So now that's uh, uh, that's in there, and I think it it works well. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably won't work. <laughs> yeah, I, I made I made one of this uh, one of these parachutes. Uh, like this, and I call it the wig. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> you can uh, let's, oh. let's change the name. You can change the name. Uh, yeah. The wig. Yeah. Oh no! Wait. Frank's wig. <laughs> uh, let's, let's make it a little bit more flyable. This episode of the Ramja Anvil Show, sponsored by Frank's wig. The only wig that works three miles up. <laughs> oh, look, this one actually kind of... This one works. This is a nice wig. <laughs> uh, but uh, speaking of wigs and visual enhancements, this uh, parachute, it looks quite good, uh, but, and now there's a funky looking arrow that allows you to adjust the height along with the natural interface. Um, yeah. How much experimentation went into finding because as a developer myself, the hardest thing isn't so much putting in the capability to do a thing in the game, it's making it natural for players to actually use. So, because mm -hmm. a tool isn't really any good if nobody can figure out how to use it aside from the person who makes it. Uh, so, yeah. how much experimentation, you talked a little bit about it, but how much experimentation went into making this actually work? A couple of days, um, 
of, of trying out uh, ideas that, are, that were in my head that I thought should work well, that didn't. Um, like, uh, uh, yeah, for example, uh, I wanted to um, make make the, the mouse follow uh, the shape of the canopy and let that um, uh, change the, the, the shape of the canopy. Uh, like, that would be the most natural thing in my opinion, but that's turned out not, not to really be as intuitive as I thought. So maybe I need to uh, play with it a little bit more, but now it's just, if you drag the canopy up and down, it makes it uh, bigger like this, and if you do it left and right, you make it smaller and bigger on, on, uh, on the other axis. And I think um, that's simple enough. And how, and how did you guys come to the new design for the parachute itself? Like, there, we, if you look at parachutes in the air sport world, uh, they can come in a lot of shapes and forms and sizes. So my question is, how did you come to the look that uh, you came to for the little air sports parachute? Do you mean purely the visual look for, uh, for this one? Yep, yeah, the visual look of it. Um, Especially when you have to deal with it, had to, it having to work procedurally so that it looks uh, like a parachute, even if you do something crazy and wild with it. So for this, I kind of thought, uh, I want something that kind of looks more like a parachute than the boxes that we had, and certainly looks a lot cooler and a lot more organic, like a, like a, a thing that, like, that deforms and inflates, but looks like a single piece instead of individual blocks. But I can't do um, fully realistic um, cells with... Uh, the, the actual cells in parachutes are hollow, and they have these uh, gaps in the front where the air can go in, and they can pressurize as you fly through through the air. Like that's not in there, so in that sense, it's not fully realistic. But the whole thing, um, even just with the same physics underneath it, just looks a hell of a lot more organic. Um, and so it was kind of I didn't quite know if this would be far along enough. Like, if this would be enough to make it look acceptable, but I'm completely sold on this after seeing it in engine now. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, it kind of looks like a futuristic uh, parachute. Like maybe uh, maybe don't need they don't need to be pressurized anymore in the future by the air rushing into them. They pressurize themselves and they are closed. It's interesting. And you then know, you'd get something that looks like this. It's interesting that you know the details needed to. Like, details that work in real life may not necessarily be the thing that looks and behaves best in the game. Uh, if not just purely for optimization and uh, performance purposes. So, speaking of performance, what is going into not only enhancing the performance of the game to uh, uh, smooth in... It, <laughs> the performance of Volo Air Sport in VR, but to release 3.7 proper and to ensure that the physics for the parachutes all work consistently. Not always in the user's favor, not always in the player's, um, to the player's detriment, but consistently and logically. Well, you've mentioned two very important things that we still need to get on, and one, is performance of just how, the, how fast the game runs, especially uh, with respect to VR. Uh, VR has been a bit of a bugbear for us, and uh, we're uh, the, I hereby apologize to people who really, really want to play this game in VR right now and have trouble with it because uh, the game is kind of out of date. VR, um, sorry. VR, very sorry. Um, no, we really are. Uh, we underestimated yes. how much work it would take after these uh, devices would have been released to just keep up to date with it. We figured it would um, that the game would sort of remain compatible with their software updates, and they would mostly be doing bug fixes and such. But no, their uh, their APIs change, and so you need to rebuild your game in order to 
uh, keep supporting. And um, as you as you know, we've had some time between our updates, uh, and we weren't really equipped to keep doing that. Uh, and so now we have a version out that's uh, not compatible with VR devices, which is a sorry state of affairs. As but you, uh, quick question for people who are hearing, okay, APIs have changed, and that means that the game is no longer compatible. In a super simplified form, what is an API? Oh, it just, um, the device uh, gives your program several um, pathways into it. Like, uh, here's the thing, go render it. Or um, another is, uh, get me the head rotation. Like, that's the kind of interaction that your, your little video game has with those devices. Uh, and that goes through a little software layer um, that they make. And if they update that and they break or, or they change the way that those things have to be talked to, then you're going to be talking to them in the wrong way. And your software is no longer compatible and it will stop running. So we hoped that kind of thing would be um, a little more robust, but it isn't. And of course, it's, uh, it's really early days for the hardware, even though they had a bunch of time to prototype it and then refine it. So, um, uh, yeah, the, the stuff changed, and the game needs to be updated in order for it to keep working. Yeah. So 3.7 will be compatible with, uh, with the new uh, VR kits that are out there. Yeah, that's the important thing for 3.7. We're going to be releasing that with full compatibility for everything, and we'll be up to date. We also needed to update Unity versions, and that broke a lot of... It's all compatibility issues, basically, uh, that we didn't expect to run into so heavily. So you upgrade Unity and it changes the way the, the rendering pipeline works in order to make things work more smoothly for VR, but that means all the software you wrote for the old rendering thing kind of breaks. But... And you have to spend time updating that and so on and so forth. It's been a cascading series of those things. But you have, even though you have simultaneously been trying to fi build content and fix all these compatibility issues at the same time, you are near the end of your journey. You have to yes. fix the state of uh, VR and just enhance performance as much as you can before you release 3.7 proper, but you're actually uh, getting close to release, which is super exciting, right? Yes. Yeah. And actually, what you're seeing now is uh, available on Steam. In, a, in the beta. It's a new beta, right? Yeah, it's a new beta. So it's beta beta four, I think. Yes. Yeah. So please check this stuff out. Also, no, uh, Nelson, did you notice that the wings are missing? Oh, good point. <laughs> the wings. Oh, the wings when you turn on the parachute. Yeah. Oh, holy crap! <laughs> also, yeah. Let me. Uh, I didn't even. I didn't even notice that. Look, ma, no wings. <laughs> and then they come back yeah. in when you spawn them back yeah. in. How, how did that? What? And, and if you let go now, uh, okay, yeah. <gasps> Just let go. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad idea yeah. to let go. And also, uh, another thing that uh, really surprised me to, uh, this morning. Was it this? Yes. A new spawn point. Two new spawn points. Two new spawn points. And that's just for this episode. By the time this goes up today, there will be three new <sighs> spawn points. Wow. An increase of amazing. plot of like, it's it's t oh, it's like 33%. It's 33% increase. <laughs> the other um, one. Yeah. <laughs> this one. Oh, and these ones are specially adapted for parachute travel. Exactly. So the big work for 3.7 has been ensuring that physics work with both uh, wingsuit and parachute, which has been fixed. Now it's just the main issue for that is just ensuring that parachutes, no matter what you build, work logically. Um, yeah, that's still, um, and that's also, we've had a couple of comments from people who've been building parachutes and they go, well, this parachute that I made looks like it ought to work, but it acts in a real, bit of a strange way and it's true we have we still have a bunch of those cases happening uh, but we can now focus on making that more consistent because everything we wanted to put in the game is in the game now we just polish it up 
This is an actual beta release, correct? Yes. Yep. Go tell the people where to get it. If you liked what you saw today, you can get Volo Airsport on Steam at itch.io and get the beta really simply. Instructions should be appearing on the screen right now. Uh, if you like this show where we talk about the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of making Volo Airsports, you can uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends, always much appreciated. And if you like the game proper, if you already have it or get it, you can leave a Steam review. It really helps. And uh, we always appreciate any feedback you leave in the Steam forums and etc. You really are what makes this game possible. Uh, so you downloading the beta, providing your feedback, you like it, leaving uh, positive Steam reviews, that all really helps us to make the best game we can for you and bring the dream of flight to, of flight to everyone. So without further ado, thanks so much for watching Pilots. Until next time. Yeah, see ya. See you.